Change the Roots. Welcome. Today we bring you Christopher. He hosts a podcast. He's also a Air Force veteran that has been teaching a lot of leadership. Without further ado, Christopher, welcome to the show. Wow. Thanks for thanks for having me as a as a guest on the show. Yeah, brother. Uh I, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm one of your listeners. I subscribe to your podcast. I, I can't honestly remember where I heard your podcast. It was probably like one of those podcaster uh sites on Facebook, one of those groups or something like that. And I, I just saw uh posted uh hey who's got a veteran podcast and I think that's how we Yeah, if that was yours, I re- I, I did reply to that one. I remember that. Yeah, so and it's super important that veterans we support each other and really kind of cross pollinating, which is amazing to have you on here, man. And if anybody hasn't listened to the Gravity podcast, you need to take a look at it. It's scrolling along the bottom for everybody that's video. You can go to https gravityct.com slash podcast. So, brother, before we dive into this, uh, what is the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, best way to get a hold of me is either the LinkedIn handle Gravity Chris or pretty much all socials for the podcast is that Gravity Podcast. So Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, really easy way to find the channel. Yeah, brother. And everybody that's listening to the show, I want you to go ahead and hit smash, share, subscribe. Whatever button on there gets it to where more people are listening to it. Share it with a veteran, share it with a friend, share it with your spouse. You know, if you're transitioning out of the military, you're going to hear a lot of great stories here. Hey, Chris, talking about great stories, transitioning and all that stuff. What is some good content for people to digest while they're in their transition? Yeah, you know, I'm still kind of in this process. While I've been out of the Air Force for a number of years, I I switched over to being a first responder. And so now is that real transition after 25 years of service. And so I'm I'm kind of doubling down on what has worked for me in the past. So I'm a um from a faith standpoint, I'm a Christian. I read my Bible every day. And I'm not saying that from like a religious standpoint. I really look at it as a as a book on leadership and on life. Uh, I mean, there's even some smutty stuff in there if you want to, you know, like tender conversation type stuff going on in the Bible. So, I mean, it's not just this boring book, but there's there's a lot of great things in there. I love the book Warrior by Doc Shauna Springer. Uh, it's a great book just talking about how we as as military, active duty veterans, just how we operate, the things that are going on inside of our head. Some of the podcasts I love listening to, uh, my buddy JT Frank, he he has the Consequence of Habit podcast. He's an Air Force veteran. And honestly, his podcast was probably the most significant thing that helped me to sobriety. Uh, I was abusing alcohol over the last couple of years, and it was not helping my mental health. And uh, I was listening to JT's podcast that whole time, and I, it was pissing <laughs> me off. <laughs> Him always talking about sobriety. I'm like, oh, shut up. I like my whiskey. Uh, and, uh, you know what? Whiskey's good. And if you can manage your whiskey and it not interfere with your life, I love it. Rock on. But for me, it wasn't working. And so, uh, his podcast has helped me the Huberman lab. If you're familiar with, um, uh, with Dr. Huberman, I like that one from a science, like that's my science geek, uh, podcast that I listen to just cause he, he delves into what's going on in our brain and in our body. And he's not just shooting from the hip. And then one that I like from a like a more of a military type one is uh, Andy Stump's uh, Cleared Hot podcast is a pretty, pretty fun one to listen to. He just talks about this and that and has some remarkable guests on some. Yeah, that's that's good that you shared all that. And what, one thing that uh, um, I want people to do is go into your audible, go into your Libby app, go into uh, your podcast app and start looking at some of these uh, content that Chris just shared. We need to start immersing ourselves into uh, stories and listening to content and stuff like that while we're transitioning. So that way, whenever we go to sit down and like be like, well, what do I want to do and go, well, all I'm trained to do is be that aircraft mechanic. Well, that's not true because all these other people are doing these amazing things and they venture down a path that you may not have ever thought about doing if you did not listen to some of this content so yeah yeah. bro yeah and dude i I get the whole entire sobriety thing 
man. Um, like honestly, like when I stopped drinking, um, along uh, what was it? July of twenty two was when I when I had my last like binge. Yeah, and I I, I just kind of listened to this one book and it helped me it helped trigger me and they had a podcast too man and it helped trigger me into the right mindset like it like click something and it was really kind of like a scientific approach and when i realized that i didn't like the taste i didn't like how it took my time away from me i didn't like yeah. how this stuff man it, it really allowed me to grow man. so uh, I know this isn't a sobriety podcast, but I do think that there's something to be said about making sure that you get rid of that crutch that you've been holding on to. Yeah, whatever that crutch is, right? It may not be alcohol. It might be something different. It might be our, our cell phones and mm-hmm. can't get ourselves free from TikTok or Instagram or whatever. And if that's interfering with the relationships in your life, then you want to cut it loose. Speaking of that, so you were in the Air Force. Um before you join, if you could go back in time and you could give yourself advice before joining the Air Force, what advice would you give yourself so that you could be successful during that timeline of your life? Yeah, be patient. <laughs> be patient with yourself. It's going to get a little rocky. Buckle up, buttercup. Be patient with yourself. I'm not a very patient person. I literally was uh, driving home just just before we got on the show here and and there's drivers that are they're waiting a full two seconds after the light turns green before they start going god forbid that they sit at the light for two seconds right and i'm starting to lose my cool now luckily i keep it all inside i don't start actually screaming at drivers and waving with one finger but i want to a little bit so be patient with yourself this life thing is tough you're gonna get kicked in the teeth dude and so take a breath you're surrounding yourself with great people. Be patient with this whole process that life is. Beautiful. With that, when you were transitioning out, so you've had multiple transitions since then. Uh, as you mentioned, the most recent one has been since you retired out of the uh, police force. But between the Air Force transition and between the police, what advice would you give to anyone that is transitioning um, so that they can be successful at uh, reintegration and your, through the transition process? Really two things. The first one kind of relates back to that advice to my younger self, and that's take it slow. Like, like you don't have to have all of this transition figured out in, in the first 30 days, right? If you served, if you served 20 years in the military and you're retiring, or more, or even just 10 years in the military and you're separating, it it's going to take some time to kind of re recalibrate yourself to this new life. And you, you've been told what to wear every day for the last decade or two, right? Like you didn't even have to think about what to put on. You just put on whatever your uniform of the day was. And now all of a sudden it's like, you don't even know what you're supposed to wear today unless you instantly transition into a job that tells you that. But so that's what I've had to tell myself is, hey, take this slow, right? You you did, you you served your your nation and your community for 25 years. You you get to take the next five or 10 years maybe to figure this thing out. So take it slow. And then as I'm taking it, so I try to fill it in with with some some things that I know are gonna help me. So I like to read. It calms my brain, takes away a lot of the anxieties. And and so I, I doubled down on that. I'm constantly reading a book right now. I think I have five books in this year, which nice. I'm a super slow reader. So five books in three is in three months is pretty good for me. Um, I like to write. I write for a, a police magazine called Police One, so I'm doing that. I like to run, uh, not just when <laughs> the animals are chasing me, but I actually do it for recreation. And then the one I actually added one. So those were kind of my foundation: reading, writing, running. But then since my wife still works full time, I took over the family cooking. I was not our chef. And there's this little uh, app on your phone called Pinterest. I don't know if people have discovered it yet. I had not. It is amazing. It tells me exactly how to cook meals. And you know, I'm not half bad at it. I burn them sometimes. But overall, I actually cook a pretty mean, uh, pretty mean meal with like fresh herbs and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, take it slow. And then you need to sit there and replace 
all of that scheduled life that the military gave you, you need to replace that with something. If you're immediately transitioning into a new career, maybe that's going to do that for you. If you're like me and you're kind of in this land of, I could sleep until noon every day if I wanted to, man, don't do it. Like let's throw in some hobbies there and, and keep yourself active so that, so that your brain still is going and so that you're not getting into more of like a depressive state. Yeah, I know personally for me, I, I even took over more of the running the kids to all the soccer, baseball, football, gymnastics, you know, so that's like one of the biggest things I was able to add to my life because honestly, let's be honest, you know, hey, it doesn't matter if you're a veteran or if you were in the military uh, first responder or not you know, our spouses end up taking the brunt of yes. all of that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, first responders don't respond. I'm like, yeah, but they're in their, they, they deploy to their backyard, essentially. Yeah. They're, and when they come home, they still haven't really downloaded. They're still geared up to go. And, you know, and then there's even those shifts where you're not going home. You're staying in a in a rack that's inside of the fire station or inside the station or wherever you're at as a first responder. So yeah, man, it, it, it's, it's crazy because like, I never thought I'd be the, the soccer dad, you know, <laughs> just hanging out with the soccer moms. So yeah. did you guys try that new applesauce <laughs> at Fred Meyer? Uh, it's like, it's cool. I don't, yeah, hey, uh, those applesauce packs, they all have mold in them, so you better go check, you know, like, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, yeah totally. no, it's, I, I don't really fit in with them, man. It's because I'm just like, uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to do that, and then if I'm not doing anything kid-related, I'm going to re- listen to an audio book. I'm going to work on something on the farm. I'm going to work on the Mill the Bet podcast, yeah. something that, like, is not, uh, me just vegging out somewhere. Totally. Right. right. And so I, I get dressed every day, every single day I get up and I get dressed for the day. Now, if it's going to be outdoor work, it's almost springtime here in, in Washington state. Then I get on my scuzzies, right. And I'm going out there and I'm getting, getting down and getting dirty. Uh, but if that's not what I'm doing, I get up, I put on a nice shirt, I put on a nice pair of jeans, some boots. And, you know, I want to, I don't want to be again, like the the 22 year old living in their parents' basement, right? I don't want my wife to have to live through me being 22 again. That's not going to be pretty. And so getting up and, and doing something, I think is really the key for, for our veteran community as they transition. Now you started your podcast. What made you get to that point of starting the podcast? What, what was your why behind it? Yeah, a good question. Um, I struggled during COVID. I struggled for a lot of reasons. I struggled, um, you know, I'm, I'm conservative, but I have friends that are more conservative. I have friends and family that are liberal and I get along good with all of them. If we're just sitting around being men or sitting around being people and having, having just conversations about our family, we don't get in fights. And I saw people getting in fights over all kinds of stuff. And I was pissing off everyone because I was, I was too moderate. You know, I wasn't far enough right. I wasn't left. And, and I'm just kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. We, here's the deal. We can disagree on, on, on how to fix the problems. But, but honestly, do we really disagree on, on everything in life? So my wife and I, when we first started the podcast, the, the, the name of it, which was way too many words, was the Two Feet on the Ground Gravity Podcast. And the idea is, how do you stay grounded in life? There's a lot of noise and chaos happening in the world. So how do we not get carried away with it? And so like, what are your foundations? What are your core values? What's your purpose? And initially, we thought it was going to be this really general America-wide audience podcast. So if you look like in the first 20 episodes, you'll see I was having all kinds of people on the, on the program. And they actually gave some really good perspectives, some that I disagreed with, but I still had great conversations with them. And as it evolved, as the podcast evolved, uh, probably this last summer, uh, when I checked myself into a PTSD recovery center, while I was there, I was processing, am I even going to keep this thing going? And I really realized that over the last year, my audience had really gotten to be military, 
veteran and first responder. That, that's the people that were listening. And that's the people I was asking to come on the show because that's who I have connection with, you know, more than, than other folks. So that's what, yeah. what it's really turned into now is just much like you guys. Hey, we, I always want to have a spot where I can bring on guests that have perspective that hopefully when the audience listens to them, it helps their life in some way as they muck through the noise and chaos in the world. Have you found that by doing that, it's helped you out a lot? Oh, completely. It helped me out as I went through this, this battle with PTSD because I mean, I, the, the connections that I had around the country with experts, I mean, Doc Shauna Springer, I mentioned her book warrior. Uh, she's a friend. I have her phone number in my phone. I can call her. Well, she came on the show. I think it was episode 28, maybe. Uh, so, I mean, I'm reaching out to people asking, Hey, can, can I interview you? And they come on the show and we have these interviews and then some of the folks, that's kind of where it ends. Others, I kind of be, build a friendship with them. And, and as I've gone through different, different challenges, I've reached out, reached back out to some of my guests who I, who were older than me. Hello, oh, look at that. Yes. Thanks, Chris. On your phone. Doc will love that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, it, it's really helped me. It's helped me because I, I'm more educated in this area. I have a little bit more awareness of what's happening within me. It still, it still hurts and it still, uh, it still is hard. Uh, but at least I understand, you know what I'm saying? Like if I, in 2010, I struggled when I was a child crime detective, struggled with having anxiety attacks and depression and some, uh, some visual images of me killing myself. And, and, uh, I didn't know what was happening the first go around back in 2010, I was really freaked out. And thankfully I had a great therapist and my wife was just a rock star and walked with me through it. Well, this go around, uh, in 2023, I, I was much more educated on what was happening. And so when it started to happen, I was able to really circle the wagons and get the resources in, in place and make some decisions of what I was going to do to, to start the process of healing my brain. Yeah, that's, that's, a uh, and we talk a lot about, um, PTSD and mental health on this podcast. And one thing that I highly recommend um, anybody that's about to go through the transition is for them to not necessarily, I'm not saying go sign your up self up for counseling, but you need to find somebody like it's not a bad place to go sit down and talk about that transition because uh, a lot of us get that whole entire, our identities tied up in what we're doing. And when you get ripped out of that, you got to really kind of prepare yourself for that. And talking through it is super important. And PTSD and all that stuff needs to be talked about in order for you to heal. It's part of the healing process. Yes. And I, and you need that unbiased, somebody that's actually going to listen to you and not judge a single word you say. You need to have that. And it's just like dating, right? You, you go and sit down with a counselor. And if it's not the right fit, don't yeah. give up seeing counselors. It, you didn't, you didn't go out on one bad date with someone and go, well, screw this. This didn't work out well. Obviously, I'm not meant to date other human beings. No, you kept trying. You kept trying until all of a sudden your little, your little moves, you know, grabbed their attention, right? So the same thing with counseling. Don't, don't do the moves in the counseling session. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I just sat down with a new counselor today. Uh, yeah. the, the counselor I'd been seeing, she has some stuff that's coming up and she asked me, Hey, Chris, can I transfer you to one of my colleagues? And I was like, yeah, hey, let's give it a shot. You know, worst case scenario, I don't like him and I fire him. Right. And, uh, I sat down with him and it was remarkable. Like this dude just listened to me for the first half hour. And then all of a sudden he took everything I said and, and we started having some back and forth dialogue and we got done and he goes, so what do you think, man? Or is this a good fit? And I was like, this is a really good fit. He's like, why? I'm like, because you clearly heard everything I was talking about. Because as we did the back and forth dialogue, I heard you going back and touching on a bunch of stuff. And then his last question is, how can I support you, man? How, why are you going to come see me every other week or so? Like, how, how am I going to support you? And, and we, we, I didn't actually have an answer right away. I'm like, uh, <laughs> fix me, like help my injured, help my injured brain. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And so we went back and forth on it and we really got to a good spot. I mean, I started giving some, he was 
pulling it out of me a little bit. And then he helped me kind of mold it into, Hey, do you think this would be a good goal for us to have? And I was like, heck yeah, man. And I haven't even tried the VA yet. I'm set up with the VA, but, um, but I'm still using some of the resources from my last employer. Uh, but I've heard really good things about the VA counselor here in my area. Like I've had a couple of people that go and sit and tell me that this person's legit. And so once I'm done with all of this, I'm even thinking about doing the long-term plan, man. If it took 25 years for my brain to get injured, is my brain going to get all Absolutely fixed up in not. seven months? Probably not. Right. So no. do I want to sit there and keep working on this so that I'm showing up as, as a better version of, of myself as my, as a husband and as a dad, or, or do I want to be like that, that football player that played 20 years and never went to the doc or the physical therapist? And now and not even 20 years, probably 10 years. Right. And now they got like three bad knees. I don't know if they have three bad knees. You, don't have three. you get what I'm saying. They're all jacked up. They can't even walk down the street. I don't want to be that guy. Right. Like I got a lot of, a lot of time left. So yeah, absolutely. I love what you said, Chris, like go see a counselor, try them out. If you don't like them, fire them, and go to someone new. Thinking back into what you just said. I mean, it's, also a matter of even if you don't think that there's something that you can gain from it right it's one of those resources that it's available to you well and i'll tell you this for most counselors if you don't have an established relationship and i don't know with the va but i'm telling you in the in the private sector if you don't have an established relationship and you call them because you are in emergency yes. you're six months out you, you're six months out same with a doc. If you don't have a doctor that you actively go to and you need to schedule a new patient appointment, you're six to nine months out in my area. So okay. go establish the relationship so that when you do need them, when all of a sudden something's falling apart in your life and you need to talk to someone, you can call them up and you can get in next week or maybe even later on this afternoon. I don't know. So yeah, super important to try them out, get that relationship established so that when you need them, they're there for you. Have you gotten any feedback from your family since you started this journey about how much you have changed? Yeah, I uh, got back from from the impatient place I went. My wife and I are walking around the neighborhood. And at the time, I was contemplating whether I was going to go back to work or not. And um, and uh, we're walking around the neighborhood. And I, I just looked at my wife and I said, I'm sorry, I'm failing you. I'm sorry, I'm failing you as a man. Like right now we're having to consider selling our house maybe because uh, even if I leave the job, I'm too young to retire and the state may not, may not approve my medical retirement application. And I apologized to her because I felt like a failure. And she looked at me and she goes, I don't care about the house. Sell the house. Let's buy a single white. I don't care. I don't care where we live. You are a different man now than you were for 25 years of Air Force and first responder life. So uh, I want you to be healthy. I want this version of you. And uh, I don't want you going back to work. I don't want you to take in other people's trauma at volume like you have been for 25 years. So, and then my daughters have communicated similar things. Now, it's not that I'm all better <laughs> now. Like, right, like I, yes. I, I, I was pretty frustrated last night with one of my, my one of my kids. And uh, the difference is before I probably would have lost my cool and yelled. This time my wife and I get in the car and start driving and I start telling her, hey, babe, I'm struggling with this. And we're going back and forth and she's, I'm asking her, give me pers perspective, filter this for me, right? That's the problem with some of us veterans. Our filter's mm -hmm. broken, it's, it's all it is. We're still good, good guys and good gals. Sometimes our filter's broken. And when we get really amped up, get irritated by something, our filter isn't totally working. So if you have that person in your life, could be a best friend, could be a spouse, uh, whoever it is, even maybe a, a, one of your kids as they get into young adulthood, that you can bounce stuff off of and say, hey, am I off base here? Yes. And be ready for them to tell you, yes, you are. You're being, you're being an imbecile right now, right? Be ready for that, right? Because that's what you're asking for. You're asking for a filter. And so my wife last night, she was, she was delicate with it, but she was like, you know, are you considering this about, about this, this, okay. this kid of ours? And I went, no, I wasn't thinking about that. Okay. So it's upsetting to you, but do you think she realizes that it's upsetting to you? No, there's no way she does. Okay. All right. So maybe that that's going to come into account. And by the end of the drive, I realized I wasn't going to do anything. It, it was something I could overlook. 
it wasn't a big violation of, you know, character or anything like that. So, um, I don't know what your question was. And why I went off <laughs> but, oh, my kids. But yeah, the family, the family has given me positive feedback and, and it's still a work in progress. I got to keep doing this every day to, to prove to them that, uh, that just how much I love them and, and how important. And I asked that life. question because you know, I know that it's a huge step for us to even take the first step to go seek help. But I don't know about you. Yeah. For me, <laughs> once I got one of those compliments, it was better than anything else. It, it, it oh, yeah. literally uh, made almost my heart skip a beat just getting that compliment saying that I was a better person and that they loved me more after having gone through something like that and that they appreciated everything that I had to give now and that this version of me was better. So I... I, I I, I say yeah, that for you. anyone who's listening, who's on the fence and who's even not even considering seeking help, right, or mental help, um, to take a step because it, it it is that important and it will change your life in a positive direction. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, and one one thing that you kind of just hit on is you, you've done a lot of different transitions, man. Um, going from the Air Force and then retire, or then going from that to transitioning out of the emergency services. And one thing that I feel like with the podcast and what you and your wife are doing, I think you found it. Um, what did it take for you to find your purpose? Well, I was looking for it this morning and I wasn't sure if it was underneath the couch or what exactly brother. So, so here's the deal. Like here, here's where my struggle is. Like my big purpose hasn't changed in life. I found this like, when I was, what are you like, showing I me? A, I found a 10, 10 millimeter. <laughs> I found that. <laughs> I haven't found my purpose yet. <laughs> here's the problem with purpose. Like again, so I, I said before, and I know this isn't necessarily like a religious podcast, but I'm a Christian. So my big purpose hasn't changed to love God and to love other people. Now, how am I going to do that on a daily basis? That's kind of like the small P purpose in my life. And the small P purpose, you're right, is I want to support veterans and first responders if they're going through tough stuff. Because I know how hard it is to make the call. And I know that you may be afraid to make the call. You're afraid of the labels. You're afraid of the consequences. Then call someone like me or someone else out there that, that's a trained peer that is trained in helping people manage stress the reality is, is most of those peers, if you're really, really struggling, most of them are going to refer you to someone else or going to encourage you to go to someone else. But uh, that, that's one of our small P purposes. The problem is, is I don't do that every day, right? So what happens when I woke up today, I drove my daughter to school, I threw uh, a beef stew in the crock pot, and now I'm sitting here and it's 845. No one's calling. There's no podcast to record today. Now, any normal human would go fishing or something, but since I don't do that, I, I go running for 30 minutes and I read a book and now I'm, now I'm bored and it's, <laughs> it's 1050, right? And now I'm like, what am I doing in this world? What's my purpose? I literally was looking at PhD programs awesome. today. Like, I, like go, and may, yeah, maybe may, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with school, right? School's good, but like, am I doing it because that's really what I want to do? Or am I doing it because I'm looking for another small P purpose? So that's the one that I haven't totally figured out. Some days I feel totally in line with both my big P and my small P purpose. Other days, brother, like I'm still in this transition process. Like, and I'm, I'm wondering if like, this is what it's going to be like for the next five years, maybe where some days I'm like, what am I doing? I haven't done anything productive in the last four days. <laughs> like, you know, so if people are struggling like that, that go back to what I said before, be patient, be patient with yourself. Be patient with yourself. You you are making a huge difference in people's lives and you don't even know it. So be patient with yourself. And you know what? Maybe just today you go out on the back deck and you enjoy the sun. That is beautifully placed. Sometimes doing nothing is the best thing to... And you have the time right now to think about things, right? You have the time to 
process. Totally. And you are going through the mental health and you're you're getting all those kind of resources, those those perspectives to actually silence that voice hopefully forever. Right? Or at least be able to um deal with that. Most of I would I would be willing to say most of our communities Instead of doing that, what they want to do, what they do instead to deal with that is either they drink, they become busy, they get another hobby, they do everything to try to avoid having to have that solitude to be able to process these things and move yeah. forward. No, that that's really wise, Yogi. Yeah, yeah, taking, allowing yourself to just sit. We don't in in twenty twenty four culture. Most of us feel. Every every moment, if we aren't doing something with our hands, we got this thing in our hands and our, our cell phones. And it just fills so much time that it really prevents us from, from getting curious with some of the stuff that might be going on. Man, if you're feeling anxious, don't run from it. Like turn towards it and just like, hey, why am I anxious right now? If, if you're driving down the street and you're all, all of a sudden driving all pissed off, hey, what's going on? It's not about the driver that mm-hmm. took two seconds to, to go to, to go after a green light. There's something else going on that's causing your fuse to be that short. Get curious with it, man. Fix it. And it may take a long time to fix it. You're probably going to need to talk to some some solid peers. You're probably going to need to talk to a counselor. You're going to maybe have to open up to your family and let them tell you when you're being an ogre. But uh, but no, I like what you said, Yogi. Just taking the time to be in some solitude and to let our our bodies and minds rest, I think, is is powerful. Yeah, I know we went up to the Space Needle uh, yesterday, <clears throat> took my brother up there, and it's a pretty crowded day because it's a beautiful day yesterday. Um, what, what part of Washington are you in? I'm Kennewick, okay, Kennewick, so Pasco, I'm, Richland. I'm Snohomish County. I so. love it. I used to work in Linwood. Nice. Oh, oh, well, nice. I mean, I mean, that's actually not a bad place to be, uh, Linwood PD, if that's what you were doing there. That's where I started. Um, yeah, I was there for two years. Yeah, so you know we're up at the Space Needle. Uh, pay um, a lot of money to go up to the top of the tower to look. Yeah, you do. To look over, mm. over the city, right? So the last time I went, I was with my son in 2019. I re-enlisted a sailor, and yesterday I went up there with my son, not not the rest of my family, but my son and then my brother and his his family so here we are we're on top of this space needle all the stuff is going on and i'm like joey let's just like sit down and like watch it happen yeah. like let's just sit down and joey like sat down with me and we just kind of sat there and we looked at it and then i was like dude do you remember the last time you were here he's like no and you know we had a good moment with each other just talking about what that whole entire thing we didn't run off to go look around the entire thing no we sat down together and those are the times that uh, i'm getting more and more of now yeah. because i'm not running around uh, being deployed i'm not focused on the job because i'm focused on what's important raising that next generation right yes so man it, it, it's it's awesome man and we, the uh, the show that you do, brother, like I, I hear a lot of the same thing over and over again. And it's just different people that are sharing these amazing perspectives of really like there's just so much that we do to keep ourselves busy that we don't actually quiet down and listen to what it is that actually matters to us. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's not easy to do, right? It takes practice. So. If you try wow. to slow down and and you, you sit there for you know sixty seconds and you almost <laughs> go crazy and you have to fill fill your time, that's okay. Next time, go for one hundred and twenty seconds, right? The next time, next time, try to hit five minutes. And again, and I think a lot of things in life are practiced behaviors, and so we, if we want to get good at just being able to be present, whether it be with our kids, whether it be all by ourselves. You got to practice at it and you got to suck before you can get good at something. So just go suck at it for a little bit and then you'll be good. <laughs> I love that, man. Like, and that's kind of like a lot of people always tell me, Oh, Chris, how do I, how do I start? And it's like, how do I start a podcast? It's typically where I get a lot of questions about 
Yeah. Like, well, one, just hit that record button and start doing it. Be totally. bad at it. Like you were saying, be bad at it. Like, and just improve 1% at a time. And eventually you'll find yourself in a totally different um, situation. If you actually feel, you know, fulfill it and keep pushing forward and 1% at a time, you're going to be amazed at what happens. Yogi, I can remember our first episode, man. It was I thought it was, it was pretty amazing. atrocious. Just as bad as your outfit. <laughs> Just as bad as your out- first outfit. <laughs> no, it was it was it was pretty pretty fun. I mean, we had a great guest and Maurice, he's a good dude. Um, and bro, it, we we grew so much into where we're at now, and that's because we just kept doing it. You just you yeah. gotta find that thing that matters and just keep doing it over and over. Yeah, I do I have agree. a book. If you haven't read it, that I re- recommend. It's called Please. "The Body Keeps the Score." Oh yes, I've read it. <laughs> Great, amazing book. Oh my gosh. Yes, and and just the reality that that gets back to that curious thing, right? That yeah. tightness in your shoulders. What's going on? Get curious with it and figure out because your body's trying to tell you something. Your body's trying to tell you, hey, exactly. I'm stressed out right now. And if we if we can start picking up on those flashing engine lights, those warning signs, it's going to prevent us from having some of the crash and burn moments that I've had in my life. And I, that's what I want to see for other people. I don't want them to have to crash and burn. Like if they do, it's okay. You're going to be okay. And if we can keep you from crashing and burning by by recognizing this stuff earlier, I'd much yes. rather that. What is what do they say? An ounce of yeah. prevention is worth more than a pound. Of, yeah, like a, pound a pound of, of something. whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't remember the exact phrase, but something like that. To- totally agree with it. Totally agree with it. Yeah, brother. And you know, I, I would we could sit here and we could talk all day long, brother. And man, we we would love to actually have you come back on. Um. So, hey, do you have anything else that you want to make sure that our listeners capture before we sign off? Yeah, uh, my wife is smoking hot, and I'm going to go have a (laughs) stay-at-home date with her in just a little bit. So, no, for real, folks, first of all, uh, if you're a veteran first responder, you, you, and I'm not throwing this word around loosely, you, you have been a hero to many people. And it, it is very often, as I'm starting my morning with a cup of coffee, that I'm reminded that the reason I get to do that is because of the men and women that are serving our country around the world right now. And because of the men and women that are serving as first responders right now in our community, I, I, I get to live in a very safe community because of them. So if, if you're still on the job in one of those professions, thank you for what you're doing. It, it gets hard. So let, let's get serious about taking care of ourselves. Let's get stingy with our sleep. Let's talk. And let's hydrate our bodies. Those are kind of the three things that I try to push a lot. Get stingy with your sleep. Talk about what's going on with people you trust. And uh, try to hydrate our bodies with good water. If after that you want to hydrate your body with some alcohol, you know, that's a decision you have to make. Same thing with a lot of coffee. I drink coffee, but we have to moderate that kind of stuff. So um, take care of yourselves because because you only get one of these bodies. Uh, But thank you for what you're doing. And uh, if you ever need anything, I'm a private message on Instagram or LinkedIn away. And with that, Chris, we want to, again, thank you for joining us. And you're always welcome in the podcast. And you're going to see more of us. I love it. Thanks, Yogi. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, to our uh, Milda Vet tribe that's listening, Chris, you can see the stuff scrolling at the bottom. If you are listening to podcasts, Gravity ct.com slash podcast take a look at his stuff chris is amazing his wife is uh even better so go listen to his podcast and mill to that tribe it's not all rainbows and unicorns out there it's your transition so take charge of it mill to that out